Gotta testify, come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day I die, I'ma touch the sky. Back when they thought pink polos are hurt the rock. Before Cam got the shit to pop, the doors was closed. I felt like bad boy street team, I couldn't work the locks. Now let's go, take them back to the plan. Me and my mama hopped in that U-Haul van. Any pessimists, I ain't talk to them. Plus I ain't had no phone in my apartment. Let's take them back to the club. At least about an hour I stand on line. I just wanted to dance. I went to Jacob for an hour after I got my advance. I, I just wanted to shine. Jay favorite line, dog do time. Now we look at me like, damn dog, you what I am. A hip hop legend. I guess I died in the accident. Because this must be heaven. I have listened to that maybe 50 times since I found it on Friday. <laughs> it is so perfect. It's but for the uninitiated, it's the neon. Uh, I didn't neon even Genesis. realize we had started recording. I thought you were just listening to the song. I was just sitting here vibing out <laughs> to it. No, it's the neon uh, Genesis theme song mixed with Kanye rapping "Touch the Sky," and it works too good. And I love anime, and I love uh, a catchy anime intro, and I love Kanye. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. She's like, I know he's canceled now, he, but look. The, you, you can't unmake the music that he's made, okay? He wrote Yeezus. You can't undo that. You could you could say that black people have slave mentalities. That doesn't change the fact that you wrote graduation. <laughs> I uh I back when everyone was trying to cancel Doja Cat, uh there was a YouTuber um who like made a video where she was like i can't make the music not bop can you <laughs> and i think about that constantly anytime like an artist who is like a really uh good discography um like does something fucked up it's like okay i can't make the music not bop can i be honest with you we started we like started talking get on the phone right around the time doja cat was getting canceled um which time the first time for the showing feet in racial chat rooms. Uh, showing feet in racial chat rooms. Of but course. um, you said that I can't make the song not bop, and I didn't. You didn't say like you didn't say. Oh, I heard a YouTuber say this. I just this whole time thought that was an original from you. <laughs> just an original thought. No, it's uh. Damn, it's, you should have never told someone me, else. You should have never told me that. I would have been giving credit to you for that in my mind because I've been. I say that all the time too. I can't make the music not bop. Yeah, Can you? The, no. <laughs> That's fuck. That's funny. But Doja Cat. Speaking of Doja Cat, getting canceled again right now. Yeah, I guess it's something to do with the Stranger Things person. Yeah. So Noah Noah Schlapp, I think his name is mm-hmm. the like dorky kid from Stranger, Th- one of the dorky kids from Stranger Things. She has like a huge crush, I guess, on some other actor mm. who's age appropriate for her. So just for context, Noah Schlapp is n- uh, seventeen. Oof. Doja's 26. The guy she has a crush on is 29. And she's been horny posting about this dude. Mm-hmm. But um, she DM'd this Noah kid and said, can you give me, give me his number or tell him to text me or something like that? And he was just like, LOL, why don't you just slide into his DMs? And she was like, because I can't find his Instagram or whatever. And he sent him, her the link and was like, it's right here. And then she was like, wait, does he have a girlfriend? And, like, he posted a TikTok of this interaction mm. because he thought it was, like, a joke, right? Mm. And, like, it came across like she was messaging him joking. Mm. But then, let me pull up the live of her because she says something creep, like, crazy heinous. I'm going to say something right now about the whole fucking, uh, the Noah Schnapp thing. Okay, Noah Schnapp. Not mm-hmm. Noah Schlapp. <laughs> it should have been Noah Schlapp, it should have been to be Noah honest. <laughs> I think that, to be fair, first let's be, let's be, try to be chill about it. To be fair, this is like a, a kid. Like Noah is like, I don't know how old he is, but there, he's not even over like, there's no way he's over like 21. He's not even 18. He is literally a kid and it's weird that you slid into his dms to ask him to set you up with someone (laughs) he is i wonder why she i wonder why she picked him yeah that too right 
does she and know he him? might. Yeah, maybe they've interacted together, but I don't know. Oh, this little cat upon the desk. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She jumped. She whacked me in the face with her tail. <laughs> well, then you're lucky. Like, I could be wrong. Um, but, like, when you're that young, you make mistakes. You do dumb shit. I'm, like, trying to be super fair. You do dumb shit. You say dumb shit. You fucking fuck up relationships with people. You you make mistakes. Like, you're supposed... Her lip liner is giving Puerto Rican middle-aged woman. <laughs> it's bad. It doesn't look good. I'm not... I'm it's, sorry. It's, it's distracting. But luckily, the listeners don't have to see it, but it's a little bit too dark for the shade she's got on. It's a tough look. <laughs> supposed to, so that you know... You're supposed to do stuff like that so that you know not to do it in the future. Like I, I did my share of fuck ups so that I don't fuck up again. Yeah, showing those, feet in racial chat showing rooms. feet in racial chat rooms. One of the fuck ups was that lip liner that you put on this morning. <laughs> um, but the fact that this person that Noah did that, like went and posted a private conversation between me and him is so unbelievably like socially unaware and whack you messaged a 17 year old kid and asked him to set you up with someone who he worked with <laughs> like is it annoying to have someone post your dms sure He's a fucking kid, though. And no one, like, saw it and was like, ew, Doja Cat's so horny. Everyone was like, oh, that's funny. Until she got, she went, like, insane on him. Mm -hmm. Because it gets worse. <laughs> and, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's, like, borderline snake shit. Like, that's, like, that's, like, weasel shit. That's way too much. You're doing a way too much at this point. Like... Well, it would. The thing is, like, like snake shit, weasel shit. It's not like he was trying to hide that he posted the DMs. Yeah, you know, like it's not like he just shared them with a few people who then leaked it. Like he posted it because clearly he thought that would be cool. Yeah, he thought it was a joke. Everyone thought it was a joke, <laughs> and then she was like, "No, I was actually so horny for this guy." <laughs> And Noah ruined it. I needed some cock, okay? And it's it's like funny because you're you could just message that guy and fuck him. Like you're Doja Cat. Like what are you why do you need to go through a literal child? <laughs> and then again, if she had just said nothing, everyone would have continued to think it was a joke. But because she went on live and, like, attacked a child, <laughs> like, yeah, you look like a fucking idiot now. And I think that you're a pervert. Like, <laughs> how horny were you, bitch? How how badly did you need the Stranger Things dick? <laughs> the Stranger dick. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to Taking the L. And Doja's taking some L's. Doja did take... Honestly, she's taking worse L's. I don't know what your L's friend, this week is. Friend of the pod, Doja Fr Cat. Friend of the pod, Doja Cat. And and sorry for not recording last week. I went on a small trip. And it wasn't a good time. So it's fine. Like... It wasn't? I did not enjoy myself. And I was not supposed to. Because I was... I ditched Jay to, <laughs> to go there. So... I did get my, I did get owned. So it turns out she shouldn't have gone. And I came back quitting drinking. So that's where I'm at now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll get a little bit more into this on the, on the when we do our L's, but I suddenly see the merits. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I, now I know what your L is. After what happened to me. <laughs> um, but so I'll do, no, no. I want to hear the story. So, a couple days ago, she tells me that she's quitting drinking, you know, to like get rid of the empty calories. Just to be clear, I don't think I have a drinking problem. I know I have a drinking problem. <laughs> and the problem is that I gained 20 fucking pounds since last year. Um, I could I am quitting. I think it'll be fine. Like, it's just like there's some social pressure, right? Like, if you mm. go out, everyone's drinking. It's like, oh, why are you drinking? And 
then that's like, oh, well, everyone else is drunk. Now I'm just sober. Tell them it's a religious thing. That's true. I, you sometimes could, you, they still. You, you could you could say you know what I'm going I'm you know I'm I'm going hard in the paint uh, I have removed everything haram from my life including this yeah I probably probably will um, just tell them you're Muslim and they'll they'll be so confused by that statement alone it'll really throw them off because they'll <laughs> that, be like you what where what? are you Bosnian <laughs> I'll be like no Irish Irish Muslim <laughs> yeah that's me. But uh, it'll, it'll be true. So that's the best part. Yeah. Um, uh, they're like, wow, really? And she's like, yeah, pray five times a day. And they're they're sitting there wondering if it's a joke or not. And now you're not talking about why you're not drinking anymore. Yeah, exactly. Now the question is, are you sure you're not Bosnian? <laughs> but um, anyway, you're L. Yeah. So she tells me she's not drinking anymore. And at first I'm kind of like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, that's going to be sort of a lifestyle change. And <laughs> that's not something you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking is a, is, is so imper- uh, like uh, an imperative aspect of your character. That's who you are. Is an alcoholic. <laughs> it's a lifestyle change. This is going to really take a, this is going to really take a, a concerted effort uh to be doing this yeah um can you please not step on my keyboard thank you um (laughs) and so at first i'm kind of like okay well that's gonna be different and then we go to this party last night that the neighbors were hosting sorry the cat wants to be on the podcast she's so all up in our business right now (laughs) I don't, I don't know, know why, why. She, she's usually not this affectionate she's like so happy she's really happy because i got her favorite food again so um, she's in a good mood but, uh, also because i bought a rug but i'll talk about that later don't worry you will hear about the rug she's obsessed with uh, in you know interior design now but um so we go to the neighbor's party we go to the neighbor's party and uh the you know it's one of those occasions where it's like okay well it's not they have alcohol for free you know uh so i'm willing to partake in free alcohol yeah you know and ray had to show up alone at first because i was working and so i got there later and so she she was drinking as well and i was like okay yeah let's let's go and not only did we drink we kind of went hard in the paint we I mean, uh, we, had, we literally just had to go up two flights of stairs to get home and somehow we still fucked it up Oh, yes, because my L is after we got shwasted doing shots of Patron and Patron on ice, vodka lemonade and what you were drinking vodka lemonade. Yes, that's what was in the lemonade. It was vodka lemonade. Oh, I thought it was just regular lemonade. You couldn't taste the vodka, could you? I didn't try it. I just saw it. No, you did. You drank some because I handed it to you when you drank some. Oh, yeah, yeah. So shots of Patron, vodka, lemonade. You know, it was a whole situation. Uh, I I started with the White Claw, but it it escalated very quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, And we'd gotten to a point where we were pretty sauced. uh, And as we were preparing to walk one of the guests home because she lived pretty close by within like two blocks or so. Which is fantastic. Love I realized that. <laughs> that I had left my bag inside and it kind of seemed like we were winding down for the night. Pretty much everyone had left. The hosts were basically like potentially going to bed. Right. And I was like, oh, shit, I left my bag in the house and they had just closed the door. And so I spin on my heel and turn around to go and to go back and get it. And, and the, I like that. I need to add this context. When she says she spun on her heels. She was actively on the stairs. <laughs> yes. I was like on the the landing going down the first stair. Like I was I had fully started to leave the premises, but I realized like in that moment that I left my bag and so I turned to go back and I of course as a drunk person misjudged my center of balance and go tumbling down the stairs and when i say i fell down (laughs) when i say i fell down the stairs i'm talking ass over tit i (laughs) i 
somersaulted I down the somersaulted stairs. down the stairs. My legs were up in the air. It was so funny. You looked like a cartoon. <laughs> you look you know like in a cartoon when they like start tumbling and then they like turn into a ball and there's like a dust cloud around them as they're like, yeah, that's what you look like. Going down those stairs. It, it was like, I, I was very concerned because despite the fact that it was hysterical, <laughs> I was also like, that's a tough fall. That is a hard fall. Luckily, we were. it was only one flight of stairs. These these neighbors were on the first floor. I did not have far to go. It was as like far as, six steps. As far, as far as falling down the stairs went. Mm-hmm. So I didn't like go anywhere. <laughs> I didn't hit my head or anything. I was like fairly good at catching myself, despite the fact that I was apparently so drunk I fell down the stairs. But you got a... Like nothing happened. Oh yeah, me I and the shot person, back to me and the person we were we were walking home. We're like, oh my god, are you okay? And you were like, I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta get my bag <laughs> Be- before they even realized whether or not they should be laughing or like seriously concerned. I was already back up on my feet. I was like, I just. I left my bag inside. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. I'm fine. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, I was. I mean, like my my shoulders a little sore and my hip is a little sore from I assume falling you know, down the falling stairs. down the <laughs> stairs. Um, but other than that, like I pretty much got away unscathed. I didn't hit my head at all. I didn't like have a headache or anything like that, which is which is good because could have gotten a concussion from that. But um, yeah, no, it was fine. It was just like I literally fell down the stairs, which is very funny yeah no it was very funny honestly you did look like a cartoon and i was wearing a skirt and you were wearing a skirt so it was like the worst every bad thing everything that could go wrong was wrong yeah it was outside i was wearing a skirt someone just happened to be in the alley (laughs) at that time like looking at us (laughs) as you felt no it was hilarious but um it's not as bad as some of the other L's. Now, that being said, that was part of the L. Oh. Uh, oh. Being inebriated, honestly, this is where I came to think, you know what? She's got some points with this whole stop, stop drinking thing. Because let's just say we got back, you know, to the apartment that we are currently recording in. Uh, and... His secret bunker apartment. <laughs> uh, the the uh, location undisclosed, you know, in the in the trenches. Apartment. The comfort zone. You'll understand that reference soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm foreshadowing. <laughs> we, so we returned to the apartment, and I was I was feeling a little bit sick, and so I was like, you know what? You just when you get that like slightly ill feeling after drinking, you just gotta puke. You just gotta go for it. Tell me why it was blue. You threw up? Yes, I did. And it was blue. I mean, I... What did you drink that was blue? Nothing. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You made it to the bathroom? Yeah. I mean, I this was... Like I said, this was a deliberate choice. Like, I was like, oh, I could not, but I think I'm going to force it. Oh. Because I feel sick and I don't want to feel okay, sick I think anymore. I vaguely remember this. Yeah. So, I, I, like, went to the bathroom, like, fully intending to, like, be sick. And it was blue. And I was like, that's not right. That's concerning. That's Cause not I right. didn't, I didn't eat anything. I didn't like, and again, these were like clear shots of Patron and lemonade w- was everything I drank was clear or lemonade. So I was like, Hmm, that's odd. It was odd. That is odd. That's odd. And I, I don't think I had eaten any food in, I don't know, quite some time. So that blue. was bizarre. It was blue. It is time to quit drinking. Yep. And I was like, this pod brought to you by sobriety. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's unfortunate. And then today, ladies and gents, I was hungover for 15 hours. Oh, gross. Normally, I am very good at you making. Bounce back. I bounce back awesome. You know, when I was, you know, when I first started drinking, I didn't get hangovers at all. Like, whatsoever it didn't matter if i blacked out i still would not i would wake up the next day feeling slightly dehydrated and that's it yeah you know um and then the years went by and i started to get slight hangovers like i would i mostly got the like nauseous stomach situation where it would be kind of hard to eat the next day Mm -hmm. but i had developed a really good way of bouncing back from that like it was like just drink a bunch a fuck ton of water and 
consume like some sort of egg product, ideally egg drop soup. Yeah. Egg drop soup for whatever reason. And I found this out by accident is like the ultimate hangover cure, like unbeatable. Uh, assuming you're somebody who doesn't, you know, I know a lot of people will like cure it with like bacon or greasy meats or whatever, but obviously I don't eat those, you know? So as a, as a substitute, egg drop soup. You know what? That egg sandwich. This So this is my first L and it was started as a W. So Jay <laughs> bought breakfast and one of the things she got was an egg croissant and she didn't eat it. And I, she gave it to me. It was like a cheese egg croissant. The W was eating it. <laughs> The L was how bad I missed it after I ate it. <laughs> it sucked. I finished it and I just turned to Jane. I was like, I missed that sandwich. It was so good. She's like, I wish there were two in this box, to it be was honest. So good. But um Yeah, so my routine of eating eggs in the morning didn't work. Water in the morning didn't work. Yeah, you drink a lot I, of water. I managed to you know what's funny is I managed to donate plasma. <laughs> while hungover i felt like shit the whole time i was in the line i was like should i do this today should i push it and like do it tomorrow no because it's gonna mess up my like week because then then i'm not gonna be able to, i have to do it like thursday monday because they have like restrictions on how many times you can do it per week yeah. like i was like i don't want to mess up my schedule like that and the whole time i'm standing there i'm like feeling so sick and they test all of my vitals and they're like, yeah, you're good to go. Mm-hmm. And I was like, huh, interesting. And sometimes when I drink the day before donating plasma, because you're not supposed to do that. Um, sometimes it'll like thin the blood just enough that it's actually a little bit faster to donate than it would be if I were just drinking water like it was my job. Mm-hmm. But today I had the unfortunate experience of, yes, okay, so it you know, the alcohol acts as a little bit of a blood thinner, but I didn't drink enough water to rehydrate after the dehydration of having that yeah. much alcohol. So it was terribly slow donating oh. plasma today, which also was an L. And I went through my entire day hungover. I could not stop being like, I feel fine now. I haven't really eaten anything today because I spent my entire day hungover. Yeah. It was terrible. Um, so for anyone who doesn't follow me on Twitter, doesn't know, I've been the Facebook marketplace bastard lately. <laughs> I have been on my, f- I am a Facebook marketplace speed runner. Number <laughs> one in the country. I have found so much shit for free on Facebook marketplace. Sitting behind us right now, a 70 pound wood, solid wood, black, executive desk it is a desk where you push the shit off of it and you get fucked on your desk it's that kind of desk and it's your desk yeah i got it for jay it was free you know how i got it back here i don't drive i took it in my little red wagon (laughs) two miles i looked so retarded walking with this fucking fucking 70 pound desk on my little red wagon (laughs) i dropped it four times you can't tell you can't tell looks great i also got uh, a bookcase which is sexy as shit and i just uh up upcycled it um a nightstand a mirror a bunch of shit for free i got are you trying to fuck me what is this <laughs> and she put her stepped on her foot you put it was your close foot upon her. my foot like like we're we're two uh congress people in a bathroom stall <laughs> um no, but I just got a bunch of shit. My my apartment is so cute right now. I've redubbed my living room the comfort zone since I got this rug. Oh my God. Did I get this fucking rug? I got the shit out of this rug. Perfect size. Perfect color. A pink rug. Who would have guessed? It brings the entire room together. It is so comfy. It is so restful. It's got a good foot feel to it, too. You it's like standing fantastic. on it. Fantastic. 10 out of 10 foot feel. It's like a new boot goofing, new rug goofing situation. <laughs> She has not been able to stop thinking about this rug since she showed up with it in the house. And honestly, I miss it. I'm going to I have a picture of it pulled up on my fucking computer so that I can still look at it while I'm in the other room. That's how much I love this rug. She's a little freak. I am a freak. But um, 
So my L is the one L. Everything I've gotten from Facebook Marketplace, fantastic. Top tier. Oh, I also got a, I got you a war, or not a wardrobe, uh, a dresser. Zero dollars. Mm-hmm. I am so good at Facebook Marketplace. But I did take one L. Uh, don't step on the keyboard. I got a TV. And it was big. It was nice. I plug it in. It's broken. Now, as I mentioned, I don't have a car. So I walked a mile in my little red wagon with this 42 inch TV on it. It was entirely feasible to me that I broke it, transporting it. So I, I went and I looked back at the TV listing and my messages with the guy. And then I looked at my Venmo interaction with him and I realized, no, it was not me who broke the TV. As soon as I check my Venmo interaction and I'm blocked by him, <laughs> he knew his ass. I know where you live, dude. <laughs> you're getting, a, your apartment is getting egged <laughs> as shit, bro. You, I went to your house, pick it up. I know where you live. You think you could hide from me, <laughs> Joe? You think you can run from me, Joe? I don't fucking think so. I have your full address and I'm willing to say it on the pod. <laughs> I'm willing to burn you on the pod. <laughs> Fuck you, Joe, you piece of shit. She's got a burn book and it's she just writes Joe's address. It's like, a, what is that TV show? The Death Note? Except Death Note, yeah. <laughs> in, except that instead of killing him by writing his name in the Death Note, you write his address in the Death Note and he gets egged. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, but that's so insane to me that like, he blocks you immediately afterwards on Venmo. And it's like, I we you talked on, on Facebook. I have your first and last name. I know where you live. If I really wanted to fuck you up, I could come fuck you up, Joe. He felt real comfortable selling a broken TV. That's crazy to me. I mean, it was 20 or t- 10 or 20 bucks, whatever. It's not like the end of the world, but like I have to carry it back down the stairs. I'm so mad about that. It's heavy. Um... But my other L regarding Facebook Marketplace is just that I've been doing it too much. And it's not like it's cheap as shit, right? It's not like it's too much money, but I have become cringe. (laughs) So a lifestyle at this point. It really is. I was walking yesterday with my little red red wagon, of course, um, in it, a mirror, a decorative ladder, uh, and a Keurig K-cup holder for the Keurig I got on Facebook Marketplace for $5. It's perfectly good. It works great. And now I have a K-cup holder. Ironically, same price as the Keurig, $5. But um, I'm walking and so you all know, there's like those people who drive around in junk trucks, right? It's like a regular truck, but they sort of set up like a cage around the, the bed of the truck to store a bunch of shit that they find in alleys. And I saw them coming down the alley and in my head, I referred to them as my competition. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. You can't have a... You can't be in competition with someone who steals bikes from alleys and sells it as scrap metal. That can't be your competition. What kind of person are you? What kind of brain disease do you have? She's gotten lost in the sauce. But more importantly... I've fallen in love with the rug. <laughs> Look at her. This is this this She's has been pink. This has been a harrowing journey as far as the Facebook Marketplace escapades, but it did end in true love. It ended in true rug. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, that was my last my last my last hurrah, I suppose. As it were. No, it's not true. I'm trying to find a rug for my room now. <laughs> so it's not quite She's over. She's like, I wanted to go out on a high note. I'm I also, won't. I'm I can't tr- stop. I'm also trying to find a rug for this room. So she can't stop. Can't be stopped. I she won't stop. stop. She can't refuses stop, to stop. stop. <sighs> it's just too good. It's. I'm sorry. I can fully furnish my apartment for cheap and or free shit. <laughs> of course I'm going to do it. Would it be easier if I drove? Hell yeah, it would. Getting that desk here. Did I mention that I dropped it four times? The only reason I was able to get it back up onto my wagon was because 
several different Ukrainian women, elderly women, were just walking by each time, conveniently, <laughs> and would say, do you want help? And I'm like, sure, you're 90. What kind of help? And it just jacked, jacked as shit. Grandma helping me pick the desk up like like it was nothing. <laughs> so shout out to those women, and shout out to the shout out to the MB on the first floor who helped me get it up the stairs because there was no way in fucking hell I was doing that. <laughs> she would have left it in the in the driveway and been like, "Get your ass here, bitch." I, I literally was I was preparing to slide it under the overhang and then just leave it until someone could help me carry it. Honestly, though, even if you did have a car, it would have to be kind of big to carry all of this stuff. The, the desk would not have fit. Yeah. No way. Say, you would have had to have like a big car. Yeah. You, like, even somebody's like normal vehicle would not. Even like a hatchback probably would not. Like it's a SUV. So long, it's too long. You know? It's weird shape. You'd need a truck. Yeah. Or a wagon. <laughs> it took me an hour and a half to walk back with it. It was so bad. But it's here and that's what matters. That was your exercise for the week. Oh, I walked so many miles this last week. I've got so much fucking exercise. My arms are sore from my wagon. And yet <laughs> she still wants to do more walking. I, she's she's being a little bit salty because <laughs> I said we should walk to Taco Bell after this. But my mood has shifted dramatically since we started recording this. I have no intention of walking there. Plus, it's nighttime. I win. She's won. She she wore me down with no convincing. No, <laughs> no arguments were made. Just I the just passage of time <laughs> got to me. We've got some Twitter content for you. Um, and I'll start with this one because I think this is funny as fuck. This might be the funniest article title I've ever read. Missing Breaking Bad's iconic characters. Not to worry. The drug dealer protagonist of the famous TV show will be immortalized with larger than life bronze statues in New Mexico. I love that New Mexico is so devoid of culture. That they're making bronze statues of Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, Albuquerque, irrelevant. But we do have this one thing going for us. Maybe people will come by. Like, it's, you know. Everyone forgot the Alamo. We need something. <laughs> <laughs> or you that's know. Texas. No, that's New Mexico. I have no idea, to be honest. It's really not my business. Forget it's just not my... It has nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny because, y you know, those... Um those things that people drive to like the world's biggest nut or like <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry the world's biggest nut if, yeah wh where are you going i'm going to the world's biggest nut i'm on my way to the world's i'm driving to the world's biggest nut impossible the largest bus mom. yeah good that's good you got her you own my mom no, but like, you know, the world's biggest pistachio, the world's largest. No, pumpkin. <laughs> no, it's like ball of yarn is the one that would I if you said that, it would have been like, yeah, but you said the world's biggest nut. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Just the fattest load. <laughs> Just the most grotesque. It just doesn't. It's like a. It's like a faucet. Some guy it won't stop. It's a. It's a medical someone, problem. Some guy covered a city in it. Oh God! <laughs> he just won't stop nutting. Please, sir. Uh, there are children here. He's been coming for the last week. Anyway, so this is Bronstead. It's so goofy, dude. But now I can't. I'm stuck on this nut thing. <laughs> I'm stuck on this nut business. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I said world's biggest nut. <laughs> you should be sorry. You've traumatized an entire audience. <laughs> now they're trying to imagine how much nut is the biggest. I know? actually want to know now. You know, I because... World's world's biggest no, nut. You're going to see like an actual nut, at which the, I... The Coco de Mer, the world's largest and heaviest nut. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad they said it like that. The world's largest and heaviest nut. Holographic tag? Is it a... I'm sorry. Is the world's largest nut an NFT? <laughs> nut fungible token? <laughs> what the fuck? Well, I just want to know, like, what is the most... Oh, it's, it's sexual. World's biggest nut gone sexual. <laughs> Look at that. 
it is, is horny it looks like an ass it is yeah it is shaped like an ass and it even has a hole in the middle yeah or it could You're be like, a nut sack you, those could be balls you could easily come inside the hole that it has i think <laughs> and you could nut inside the world's biggest nut this podcast has become degenerate. Let's move. Let's Walter White, <laughs> Jesse Finkman. How dare you do us like this? Goodbye. Um, I've seen this clip. You haven't seen it. This is a fresh watch for me. It, this is um Joe Rogan, Ro Jogan. Some Ro might say Jogan, and that guy comedian who was fat and then wasn't fat and then he was Tom Segura. Don't know him. He's mid. Most of his jokes are like, oh, I hate my wife. You know, he's like that kind of comedian. Hetero fatalist, if you will. Yeah. So anyway, they're talking about homeless people. And this this is the conversation they have. And then uh, we're on the underpass and there's porta potties. Not one either, like four, like a deck of porta potties. Wow. And then someone has a car. <laughs> I'm sorry. I look. Wow. 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 Port- I've never seen porta potties before. Porta potties. So. Wow. <laughs> Our park there on the sidewalk like partly on the sidewalk so they're like half blocking a lane and then they have like a a canopy draped over their car and they have just stacks of shit and then next to it was a dresser they had a dresser jesus so they had their shoes and a shoe rack there was a shoe rack like this is where they live that's really wild i didn't know also (sighs) that um you know when when you, you see stuff like that on the streets at least in los angeles or maybe in california those are that's protected property like by law you know that yeah it's someone's stuff <laughs> that's someone's stuff what do you mean it's protect they own it mm-hmm. yeah you can't just steal someone's stuff <laughs> that's illegal yes if i walked in your house mm-hmm. and grabbed some of your shit and got arrested what if, that's protected property i can't even believe it <laughs> that's wow. yeah that's their fucking stuff you can't steal people's stuff moron it's crazy, but um, you know, once you become houseless, it's illegal to rob you. <laughs> like if you were, so to you're go, not supposed to do that. But and, and but like that's that person's property by law. If you oh, were to the go, homeless person's property yes. is protected. Yes, absolutely. What is? It? I'm sorry. Why is this a hard concept to understand? Yeah, homeless people have property. Homeless people own things. Fucking morons! You can't rob them. Why do you want to rob them? What are you trying to do? Like, what's the matter with He's you? Like, I really wanted that shoe rag. <laughs> huh? If you were to go and try to move that or take that, you get arrested. Yeah. Yeah, just like with anyone's stuff, <laughs> you can't steal. <laughs> it would be stealing. <laughs> Hilarious. Mm-hmm. But they wouldn't arrest you if you shot somebody. Maybe mm-hmm. you should just go and shoot the homeless people. I like your ideas. Yeah. yeah. And if nobody claims it, I mean, nobody does anything about violent crime in LA anymore. It's a fucking joke. Yeah. They're just letting people out. What? Yeah. No. I didn't, ex- you know, somehow even with the whole like, oh, homeless people have stuff. That's so crazy. Um, I wasn't expecting him to go there. Yeah. No, I wasn't either. What do you mean you can just shoot them? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? What? What the fuck is the matter with you? You mean just shoot them? That's Th- wild. That's your solution to homelessness? Shoot them? <laughs> like, and it's funny because it all starts with him being angry. He's angry that homeless people have porta potties they can use, which is also not common and they usually lock them up at the end of the night so yeah that's why a lot of homeless people use the bathroom on the sidewalk because you have to pee you have to poop in the middle of the night you can't use your fucking porta potties they're locked up and like this is a homeless family that has a car and they have some belongings Mm -hmm. so it's just like obviously they had a house or uh, some sort of housing and became displaced and now they're in a dire situation. Like, that's one of the most awful things that could ever happen to you. And you're like, shoot him. Why don't you just put a bullet in their head and then steal their stuff? Like, what the fuck is the matter? What kind of fucked up brain do you have? You fucking Neanderthal ass bitch. Yeah, it's like, I'm sure it was supposed to be a joke or whatever, but it was like, what's funny about shooting someone in the most heinous situation anyone could ever be in? 
Like you see someone like literally homeless and you're like, hey, why don't we get a group of guys together and go kill them? <laughs> like you're like you're fucking uh, uh, Patrick Bateman or some shit. An American psycho just stabbing a homeless guy to death. What kind of fucked up shit is this? Yeah, that's that's wild. To be expected from Ro joking, I suppose. I don't know, though. Like, he's terrible. He hates homeless people. But, like, I didn't expect him to just say it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fucking insane. Um, So, there's been a couple of conversations happening on Twitter recently. And I thought just this one... Couple. I thought this was fascinating. So, somebody tweeted the other day um, that it, this is like a, I don't know, a blonde woman... Um, and honestly, she kind of looks like someone we went to high school with. Yeah, I was going to say, you know she's exactly pretty, who. She's pretty mid. Like, <laughs> she's not like a hot. This is like a normal looking blonde woman, I guess you could say. Um, she's youngish, but not. She's probably she's a little bit of a masculine energy <laughs> to her face. Um, but uh, yeah, so she um she posted that. She's been running into dads of her three-year-old's classmates asking for their emails for her child's birthday party. And so far, all of the three out of three dads have proceeded to give me their wives' emails instead. This is now a social experiment. And so I I saw this and I read through some of the replies. And it's so funny because they all fall into one of two camps. Either they are replies that are like, my wife is more competent than me. That's it. Yeah, this that's all says, I have to say. My wife knows the dates and times of our plans. I tend to forget like all of them. Yeah, um, like half of the replies are like, my wife is competent and I am stupid, you know, and then the other half are. You will not catch me with a woman's email address. And that's the correct response, right? Because saying like, oh, my wife is better with times of day. Like she does it because you don't, you fucking moron. <laughs> but like. Yeah, if someone was like, oh, no, I'm not having another wife's email in my fucking phone. Or, what? Yeah, no, that's valid. Absolutely, that's valid. And you guys are in the, in the right. <laughs> it's just like, um, honestly, like, honestly, they're bending over backwards to, like, uh, you know, make up excuses for, for this. And I'm just like, I think I would respect you more if, if you were to say my wife would go psycho if uh i had so if i was emailing back and forth with you no matter what the topic was um maybe not the healthiest but you know it's like <laughs> just go ahead and say it you know <laughs> yeah i mean uh i don't know but it is dumb as fuck when people are like yeah it's my wife knows the schedule like shut the fuck up just say that yeah I'm not going to let my wife catch me dead with another woman's email. <laughs> Fuck that. And yeah, say it. Cause you're right. Like would, is that something that would particularly bother me? Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to front. She, yes. She Why is the psycho. Email in your fucking phone. <laughs> what are you doing with that email? You're going to schedule a play date. You're going to get, you're going to get the kids to the fucking uh, birthday party. I don't fucking think so. You're going to be playing FIFA. <laughs> I'm driving the kids to the birthday party. What the fuck do you need this email for? <laughs> I don't even have your email. What the fuck does she got your email for? No, absolutely not. I do think it's interesting that like, I don't know if she thought that like men were going to pass it off to their wives. Why did you track down the dads in the first place? Yeah, right. Like, why not just ask the wives? I guess maybe it was like the dads were around. But if the dads are around, what kind if they're picking their kids up from preschool, you can't you can't front like your wife is doing all the scheduling. Yeah, it's like I, th that's my confusion It's like it's either one or the other. Either she was specifically finding the dads only to get, you know, passed over to the wives or the dads are the ones who are doing the like pick up and drop off and like are are the ones chauffeuring the children to the to their activities and yet you're still getting the like oh well my wife is more competent than me she does all of the like well she doesn't though if you're here <laughs> yeah so anyway bullshit i call bullshit um 
The other uh, fun thing I wanted to show you, I have a little bit of a controversial take on. Okay. So this is one of those posts that, um, you know, basically the account posts things of like men being weird in DMs or on social media. And so uh, she tweeted, this dude teaches a course in masculinity. And it's a post that says, um, it's like a it's like an instagram post from this guy and he he says um quote why are you shirtless skin to skin maternal madi getting soft on us uh that's his name um and quote and he said let me help you out my wife goes into labor immediately after uh fajar i told her great i'm going to bed wake me up when it's done I refuse to sit in on labors. It is not a man's place and never was even in Britain up until the feminist revolution. Why would I want to see my wife in that state? How am I meant to sleep with her again after witnessing that traumatic nightmare? She understood, of course. Better still, she agrees. Two hours later, she comes upstairs with the baby. Home birth. And wakes me up to a beautiful new addition to our family. P.S. The midwives didn't even make it in time. She handled that business on her own like a real boss babe. So... I'm not going to say the post is not cringe because it is cringe, especially with the context that this is like a home birth and like they're birthing. You, there's home potential. Birth, that's not sanitary. Yeah. There's potential complications. You're at home. You're not even in a sterile environment. You don't like, even have the midwives there. Yeah. They don't even have the midwives there. You birthed your own baby. That's fucked up. <laughs> you know, like there, there's elements of this that are problematic, right? That you left your wife unattended to do what could have been potentially dangerous um, on her own while you're sleeping. Um, Okay. But (laughs) now here comes my potentially controversial take because a lot of, uh, a lot of people in the replies were like, um, you know, I can't believe he left her during one of the hardest tasks to, you know, that you can do as like a woman or whatever. Well, if this weren't in the context of them being in a home birth and not having midwives on hand, I don't have an inherent problem with people not, uh, you know, viewing the birth of their child. It is a highly traumatic experience to watch someone give birth. People have gotten PTSD from it. Yeah. It has. And, and in some cases, it actually ruins their relationship to watch their partner give birth because they they no longer like in in some cases people no longer feel sexually attracted to their partner after like watching them give birth or again it gives them some sort of weird like to the point where like even i mean obviously the person giving birth can uh become traumatized or you know have um postpartum yeah or whatever the case is but like it's documented that partners can also become traumatized from watching the process because it's grisly it's yeah. like disgusting it's you know fucking horrifying. it's horrifying the 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 like what what giving birth looks like and the whole time your partner is in immense pain mm-hmm. unless um you know they had an epidural or something but even then um i'm sure it's still uncomfortable right so it's like your your partner is screaming mm-hmm. you know and like having a alien type experience going down um like it's it's not a process that i think like if you know that it's going to fuck with you to like watch your partner suffer in that in that in that way and like you know it's going to fuck with you to like view it and that it's potentially going to be negative for you and your partner i don't i don't think it's a i don't think it's a controversial take to say don't don't be there I wouldn't want somebody to watch me give birth. I wouldn't want somebody I cared about to watch me give birth. I would like let maybe a friend in the room who like also had, you know, done it or was planning on doing it in the future. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't think I would want like my partner in the room, to be honest. I think that I am going to be such a bitch my entire pregnancy that my partner can, they can get a break. You don't have to come in. That's your, that's your, you, that's your business. You want to come in, that's fine. You don't want to come in, that's fine. You've endured nine months of me being <laughs> the, just worst. the worst, <laughs> just the absolute worst version of myself. And most of it intentional because <laughs> I can get away with it because I'm pregnant. <laughs> So she's, yeah, she's so like, you don't have to come. She's in. like, I'm planning to be a brat for almost an entire year. So, you know, you can skip it. Yeah. You don't have to watch that disgusting <laughs> shit show. 
<laughs> literally you don't have to that's, yeah you don't have to watch me shit on the table while i'm giving <laughs> you have birth to watch me i i have a friend who um is like a delivery nurse uh and it's just yeah she has to like clean people up after they shit themselves giving birth i mean how could you stop yourself from doing it though? no you can't you literally can't like you're pushing you're pushing of course for you're gonna poop hours yeah <laughs> like and it's not something you can prepare for in advance like you have to you have there's and in in some cases they're in so much pain they don't even notice yeah like and so like the delivery nurses they don't say anything about it they just sort of like wipe it away and like go about their business while you're you know trying to give birth right Mm -hmm. so it's just like i don't know um it's just one of those things where i'm like i don't i don't think that you know it's and, and again and it's a little bit different in this case because his wife was literally by herself, so if she had died, like that's kind of on you. At also, that point. like, what do you mean, wake me up when it's done? You're going to bed. What like, the fuck is the matter with you, you <laughs> psychopath? Like, that's weird. That is weird. Um, but it, just the the concept of like him saying he refuses to sit in on labor is, I'm like, honestly, that's not the cringe part. I think that's fine. I like. I, I, you you're framing it as like that is not a man's place but like i can see a lot of people would be uncomfortable with that you know and again they're like it's not it's not baseless there are serious ramifications that um you know can occur from choosing to you know partake in that process so yeah. i'm just like ah i don't know maybe it's maybe it's uh maybe it's a little cancelable to say but i think it's okay to not I'm just so scared of birth. I feel like I'm lucky because every woman in my family, they were in labor for like my mom for both my brother and I was in labor for less than an hour. That's crazy. Yeah, right. Wide hips. Yeah. Good birthing. <laughs> birthing I suppose. Hips. <laughs> like, but some people will be in labor for like twelve hours, dude. That's insane. I was a C section, so who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed <laughs> because and it fucks you like this yeah, is the thing like, i've been harping on with banning abortion because you're forcing people to endure some one of the most changes their bodies forever it changes your body forever it takes years off your life yeah like and it it varies depending on the gender of the child um men male child male children take more years off of the their parents life than female children because sometimes i guess and I read this in a sociology book like years ago, so I'm not, um, you know, up to date on like what the exact verbiage was. But it's something about the testosterone. Sometimes your system tries to attack it or something like that. Okay. I don't know. Um, but there's a, something about um, male babies like are harder on, um, you know, a, a parent's system for That's some so reason. That's so fucked yeah. up. That's so scary. What the fuck? Yeah. And we're just supposed to do that? And it, like, pushes your organs around. And, like, some you people... pee every time you laugh. <laughs> yeah, some people, like, have minor incontinence forever after that. It's like, huh? Okay. That's Fucking cool. hell, dude. And s- that 19 kids and counting family? Bro, what the fuck? Your pussy must be a nightmare. <laughs> That's they, dog. How do you even it. have sex anymore? <laughs> They took her body for a ride. He just, he honestly just jerks off into a tunnel at this point. And yeah. Like, Let's hope for the best. That's so disgusting. That's so disgusting. <laughs> Fucking hell. They got to take the turkey baster and like mix it up. <laughs> that's a nightmare for your body, dude. That woman's going to die immediately. Her death is gonna, imminent. <laughs> I was going to say, she's like not that old, I think. She's maybe in her late 40s, early 50s. No, she's going to be in her 50s by now. She's got kids in their 30s. Oh, okay. I guess she got married at like 18, but yeah. They started young, yeah. She got she got kids in their 30s who are in jail for child mm. pornography. Ah, yes. That's because that's the Duggar family, right? Yeah, yeah. I mm. mean, th- those kids are fucked, dude. Like, the older brother has like a bunch of child porn ca- charges. He like was molesting his sisters mm. growing up. So his sisters are fucked up, too. They're in loveless marriages. It's all fucked. Every one of those kids is fucked forever. Like, Mm -hmm. aside from the fact that you're being raised by, like, cult Christians, you also were raised on TV. Yeah. And that's tough, too. You have to adhere to these extremely strict guidelines. Mm -hmm. Like, they could only side hug the people they were dating until they got married. 
So mm. like all if you watch, they have their weddings, their first kisses are atrocious. They look so bad. <laughs> That's insane, dude. I yeah. can't imagine at all. It's a nightmare. What a nightmare fucking like way to live your life. I mean, uh, sex abuse aside, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're literally being raised in like an Arkansas cult. Yeah. And like the other thing, too, is when you have that many children, like you're not raising your kids anymore. You're no. causing your children to raise themselves like what they do um this is like common i guess in fundamental circles fundamentalist circles where they have like a lot of kids like quiverful type shit yeah. um where they do like a buddy system where like they pair up their kids with like older the older kids and like essentially make that their pseudo parent you know fucking hell so that like because I mean, because you're also pregnant right so the dad is absent i don't know what the fuck he does does he even have a job i don't know but like the mom is pregnant at so all you, times. At all times. So you're like raising kids also pregnant as shit. <laughs> like constantly. And your body there's that's not right. A hormone nightmare. That the idea that that's like the way that God intended things to be is like, oh, he intended you to die at 60 because you pushed so many fucking babies out. He he intended for you to have the loosest pussy <laughs> in the United States of America. That's what he intended. He intended for you to have the most fucked organs. Like, no. Bullshit. Bullshit. Like, he intended for your husband to pull out. <laughs> for the love of God, pull out. <laughs> That's so crazy. Like, I... I'm like, has she gone through menopause yet? Is she I'm hoping. Is she I'm hoping. yet? Because she's had a ton of miscarriages. Yeah. Like a fuck. And at that certain age, it's like your kids are going to be, you know, you're going to be pushing out disabled kids who are like super ill mm. at the, because if you're having babies in your late 40s, yeah. It's like, nah, it's not. Yeah. But for both, for both her and the sperm is like, you know, yeah. they, they find the older the male parent is, the more the higher the chance that like there's some specific i don't know if it's down syndrome no it's like, autism actually oh, autism but okay. th which is like that's fine you can have autism be fine most of, most of the, our listeners more... have autism but when the <laughs> woman is older it's down syndrome oh, okay which is you can also have down syndrome and live a normal healthy life right but i think it's generally correlated with the more severe cases of both yeah you know where you have like developmental problems um so I don't know. That's that's anyways. They, they need to stop having sex and maybe kill themselves. Ban sex just so like, honestly, ban sex just for the Duggar family. Like, um, it's a call for help. In your late forties, raising a baby, that shit ain't right. <laughs> that shit ain't right. Not for you or the baby. You're too old to be having kids. You couldn't even pay attention to your kids when he was trying to fuck other kids, like. <laughs> Jesus Christ, lady, get your shit together. I always, I mean, I mean, it is the dad, really. My, He's my, the fuck, though. my parents had had uh, children very late in life. Um, I want to say my mother was about to turn forty. Okay, and like, I oh, I thought about that constantly as a child. I was like, why do you what? Why did you want to have a young kid at now? Yeah, you know, not that people in their forties or fifties are old necessarily. It's just like you want to be running after a small child. Why? Yeah, I wouldn't. My mom was. I don't. I don't my, really want to now. But my mom was twenty nine when I was born, and my dad was thirty eight. Because mm -hmm. they're pretty far apart in age. So, like, yeah, I don't know. I literally was stressing out earlier today because I was sitting on the couch and I was like, I want to have a baby by the time I'm twenty nine. I want to have a baby before I'm 30. Like, oh no, <laughs> that's soon. My financial situation is precarious. <laughs> I'm not can't, baby ready. I am not baby ready. I still like when I hear that people had kids, I'm like, oh no. Or like when someone's like, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm like, that good sucks. or bad pregnant. Like <laughs> it's still 50, 50, right? So mm -hmm. like, the idea that I should be having a child is disgusting. No, I can't have a baby. I get all my furniture from Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> what kind of parent would I be? One with a comfy ass rug. That's the type of parent I would be. 
subscribe to the Patreon. Please subscribe to the Patreon. Thank you for the person that we actually got two new subs last week. So thank you to our two new uh, patrons. We put out bonus content last week, but there two weeks ago. So we'll have more bonus content in the weeks to come for the patrons for our, our big loser patrons. Yes. And then if we meet our Patreon goal, um, we'll do, we'll uh, do an ep- Yeah, we'll do confessions and it'll be available for all patrons. Gotta testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day I die, I'ma touch the sky.